Hello everyone. In previous two videos related to leveling, we have learned about the basics of leveling, the equipments required in leveling, and also we have learned about the principle of leveling. In this video, we are going to learn about the methods of leveling. So let's discuss about the methods of leveling. Leveling can be done by height of instrument method or leveling can be done by rise and fall method. These are the two methods which are commonly being used methods when we are using automatic level. Or if we are using theodolite, then again these two methods can be used to determine the heights of the later positions. But if we are using total station, then in that case we don't need these methods. So let's discuss about the first method of leveling which is height of instrument method. So in order to understand this method of labeling, let's create a scenario on field. Let's say this is the cross section of the lathe and we want to determine the later position of different points on this lens surface or if we want to determine the reduced level of different points on this cross section. So in order to start the labeling process, we should know a point where the reduced level should be known and that is benchmark. So this is benchmark and we know that the benchmark is actually the one which tells us about the reduced level to a certain point from mean sea level. This is the place where the height from mean sea level up to this point is known which we call as reduced level of benchmark. Now to start the leveling process first we have to set out instrument. So this is the place where we are placing our instrument. As I already discussed in my previous videos, while starting the leveling process, first of all, we have to take the staff reading at benchmark. So placing the staff at benchmark and taking the staff reading, which we call as backside reading. Now, if we want to determine the height of instrument, because this is the height of instrument method, where the height of instrument is determined first. So, height of instrument will be calculated as reduced level of benchmark plus the backside reading. So, the reduced level at the benchmark is known. We will simply add the backside reading. Then we will be having the height of instrument or you can say the reduced level of the axis of the instrument, the horizontal axis. So we know the reduced level of this axis and now we want to determine the reduced level of the points. Let's say A point if we want to know the reduced level of this point. Then we will simply put the staff at this point and we will note down the staff reading. So this is this will be the staff reading at point A. Now how we will calculate the reduced level at point A? So this can simply be calculated as since we know the reduced level of this axis now we want to go below this axis it means we are moving down therefore we need to subtract the staff reading from the height of instrument to get the reduced level at point a so this is how we will calculate the reduced level at different points using height of instrument method let's say we have another point point b in a similar way we will place the staff at point B aiming towards the B point and determining the staff reading at B point then the reduced level at B point will be calculated as height of instrument the reduced level of the height of instrument because again we have to move downward so therefore again we will be subtracting the staff reading at B point then we will be having the reduced level at point B so this way we can proceed now this height of instrument or you can say the reduced level of the axis of the instrument for this setup will be same but if you are shifting the equipment from one place to another place then the height of instrument will be changed. So when we will be solving the examples of height of instrument method then I will be telling you that how the reduced level calculations will be done when we are shifting the equipment from one position to another position calling same methods of equilibrium now we shift towards the another method the second method which is a rise and fall method recalling the same that we have got before in the height of instrument method like we have to take the staff reading at the benchmark first which is backside we know the reduced level at benchmark now how the procedure will be done in the rise and fall method let's say if we want to determine the reduced level at the uh, same point a point then again we have to take the staff reading at a point and let's say this is the staff reading at a point now the procedure in rise and fall method will be 
First, we will take the backside reading. Then we will subtract that reading with the next staff reading that we have taken, which is staff reading taken at point A. Now the difference between them will decide whether there is a rise or fall as compared to the previous point. Now since here you can see the benchmark, the backside reading is taken at benchmark which is this point and a star feeding taken at point A is this point. From the visual representation, you can see that benchmark is higher than point A or you can say the next point which is A point is below than the benchmark. So if we subtract the star feeding at point A from backside and if it comes out to be negative, it means it will be a fault. It's quite obvious that if the staff is over here, the star feeding will be lesser as compared to the staff reading taken at point A because point A is shallower than that of the benchmark. So it will have higher reading. So smaller reading at backside, higher reading at point A makes it a negative. Hence there will be a fall which can be seen through this visual representation. Now how we will be calculating the reduced level at point A in this method? So this will be done by taking the reduced level of the benchmark and subtracting the value that we have obtained from this difference. So then that will be the reduced level at point A. That makes sense, right? Because you can see here the reduced level at this point is known which is reduced level of the benchmark. Now the difference of the staff will actually be the difference between these two lines the one line and this another line so if we subtract that value so then we will be having the reduced level at point a it's also possible that we may obtain this difference as positive that will be the case when the point a will be higher than that of the benchmark then that case the staff reading at benchmark will be higher than that of the staff reading taken at point a in that case there will be a positive value and we then name it as rise and the formula will simply be a change of the sign with the positive because it's a bit higher than that of the previous point. So this is how the calculations will be done in rise and fall method. Now as if we have another point let's say point B the procedure will be same like we have to take the staff reading at point B and let's say this is the staff reading taken at point B. Now procedure will be a bit different than that of the height of instrument method because in height of instrument method for a single setup if we have calculated the height of instrument then simply we have to subtract the staff reading at point a and point b but here it's a bit different we don't need to take the staff reading at backside only now we have to look at the staff reading taken at the previous point before point b which is point a it means staff reading at point a minus staff reading at point b the difference between the levels at point A and point B, this will be this level. So again, if it is negative, it means point B is shallower than that point A, which is actually be the case in this sketch. And procedure will be reduced level at point B will be equal to reduced level of point A minus 4. So now look at here, we are not using reduced level of the benchmark, but we are using the reduced level of the previous point, this point. So again, that makes sense that we if we want to determine the reduced level of point b then first we know, need to know the reduced level of point a then we have to subtract the fall if it is fall then it will be subtraction and if it is rise then in that case the difference between them will be positive and it will be a rise and the only difference will then be the change of the sign that is positive in this case which will be the case when point b will be higher than that of point a so I believe uh, you got to know how the procedure goes on in both these methods, right of instrument method and rise and fall method. The calculations are very easy in case of labeling, whether you are doing in a height of instrument method or in a rise and fall method, because it simply is the addition and subtraction. But you have to have the concept behind it how the calculation goes on, whether it is a height of instrument method or a rise and fall method. And once you get the grasp of the concept behind the height of instrument and rise and fall method then you can simply do it without remembering these simple formulas because it's a simple addition and subtraction that can be done once you solve a 
example related to these methods. So in next videos, I will be going to solve examples related to both these methods, height of instrument method as well as the rise and fall method. Over there then I believe you will be having better understanding of doing leveling on field. So this is all from this video where we have learned about both the methods of leveling, rise and fall method as well as the height of instrument method. In next coming videos, we are going to solve the problems related to these methods. So this is all. Thank you for watching this video.